The Second World War brought with it some of the most horrific atrocities history has ever seen. Some of the suffering was hidden and revealed to the world only after the war ended. One photograph found on the body of a Japanese soldier became a haunting symbol of wartime brutality. This is the story of Leonard Sifleet, the Australian sergeant whose execution by beheading was photographed and left behind for all to witness. It is perhaps helpful to start before the war. Leonard Sifleet was your average Australian man. He was born in 1914 and grew up in a small town in New South Wales. He lived a simple life with simple pleasures. He loved swimming, his family and his country. In the 1920s, Leonard moved to Sydney to find a new job. His hope was to join the police force, but he was ultimately rejected because of his poor eyesight. However, his time to serve his country would soon come. In 1940, on the eve of World War II, Leonard was drafted into the Australian militia. His first stint would be at the Richmond Air Force Base, where he served for three months. However, in 1941, Leonard tragically lost his mother, and so he had to move back to help care for his two younger brothers. Leonard also met a woman named Clarice. The two fell in love and became engaged. But later in 1941, he would be thrown back into the line of duty when he enlisted for the second Australian Imperial Force. And then, in 1942, he joined a special unit and attended special operations training in Cairns, Far North Queensland. After completing his training, Leonard was officially assigned to a station in Dutch New Guinea, where he would monitor the coast as a radio operator. This area had recently been taken over by the Japanese, and the Inter-Allied Service Department was hoping to keep tabs on their occupation by establishing this station in the hills. By 1943, Leonard had been promoted to the rank of sergeant, and now his part in this horrific war would truly begin. In May of 1943, Leonard officially began serving with M Special Unit in Papua New Guinea. Leonard was more than just a radio operator now. He was Sergeant Sifleet, leading his team members through the New Guinea mountains as a unit. He was considered by all as a great leader, with his commander describing him as, quote, the best type of non-commissioned officer of the Australian Imperial Force. He was young and competent. In September of 1943, Leonard and his team were hiking through the mountains of New Guinea. They were headed north towards the coast under the leadership of the Dutch Royal Navy Sergeant H.N. Steverman in a mission known as Operation Whiting. The plan was to join forces with another team led by Lieutenant Jack Fryer in the north who was leading a mission under the codename Operation Locust. However, Leonard would never make it to Operation Locust's position. In addition to Sergeant Staverman, Leonard was also travelling with two other privates, Private Raharing and Private Patiwal. At one point, the group decided to split up, with Sergeant Staverman and Patiwal going off to explore the area further. During this time, Patawal and Sergeant Staverman were captured by natives, natives who were hostile. However, Patawal later escaped and was able to join back up with Sifleet and Raharing. Staverman would later be killed. The three were forced to continue their mission without Sergeant Staverman, forced to hide out in the wilderness from the native bands who could attack them at any moment. Leonard decided to message Operation Locust leader Jack Fryer to be aware of any native troops and to keep an eye out of any Japanese patrols in the area. Leonard told Jack Fryer that this would be the last time he would hear from them since Leonard had decided to burn his party's codes and bury their radio in fear that they would soon be captured, realising that likely it was just a matter of time. And unfortunately, his worst fear soon came true. While attempting to escape to safety at the Dutch border, Leonard, Pitawal, and Raharing were all ambushed by natives. Fearless, loyal, and determined till the end, Leonard refused to go down without a fight. Although there were well over 100 native soldiers in the band that attacked them, Leonard still fought bravely in an attempt to save his men from the inevitable. He fired into the crowd, wounding one of the natives in the process, but the three were ultimately captured and turned over to the Japanese authorities on the island. Leonard and his two privates were held captive by the Japanese for a span of two weeks. 
During this time, the three were interrogated and brutally tortured repeatedly by the Japanese. Meanwhile, back home in Australia, Leonard's fiancée, Clarice Lane, was under the impression that she had absolutely nothing to worry about. She had received two letters from the Allied Intelligence Bureau, notifying her that Leonard had, quote, requested that she be informed of his safety and well-being, and the Allied forces made no attempt to rescue the three soldiers. On the afternoon of the 24th of October 1943, Sergeant Leonard, Pitawal, and Raharing were all taken down to a Tapai beach by the Japanese. The three were tied up, blindfolded, and emaciated from the weeks of harsh conditions under captivity. A large crowd of Japanese soldiers and natives accompanied the captives to the beach. Surrounding the condemned, they watched as Leonard and his team, brave until the end, were forced down to the ground. But even bound and blindfolded, his courage had not left him, and Leonard held his head high in defiance as he faced his fate. Vice Admiral Mishiaki Kamada of the Japanese Imperial Navy had sentenced all three members of Operation Whiting to death by execution. Within moments, they were to be beheaded. A Japanese officer by the name of Yusano Chikeo was to be their executioner. In preparation for his gruesome duty, he ordered a young private to photograph the moment of impact. It is impossible to know the intentions of the executioner in having the execution documented, and little did he know that his grisly action would become known as one of the most infamous scenes in World War II history. In April of 1944, a photograph was found on the body of a Japanese soldier who died in action in New Guinea. The image showed a white soldier, bound and blindfolded, kneeling on the ground before a Japanese soldier, with his sword swung high into the air, preparing for a downward swing that would take off the man's head. This was the execution of Leonard, an image that would soon make a permanent impact on the Western world. The photograph began circulating through the Australian newspapers, spreading like wildfire, until it was finally published in Life magazine for all of the world to see in May of 1945. It remains the only known photograph of an Allied soldier being executed by the Japanese. Allowing the public to see with their own eyes the horrors that befell so many of their loved ones throughout the war, the image came to represent the brutal treatment of prisoners of war by the Japanese shocking the West and inspiring hatred and vengeance in the hearts of many. The executioner who was caught in the act was eventually captured and tried for his crimes. He was originally sentenced to be hanged, but in the end, he only spent 10 years in prison before being set free. Leonard was later honoured at the Australian War Memorial in Canberra, Australia, with the infamous image of his final moments displayed for all to bear witness. From the invasion of China to the end of World War II, it is believed that the Japanese military murdered anywhere from 3 million to over 10 million people. These included Chinese, Indonesian, Filipino, Korean, Indo-Chinese, and Western prisoners of war. The photograph of Leonard and his execution truly highlights the horrors of war and the cruelty of Imperial Japanese officers. It is important to remember the two of the men who were killed with him, as they are often forgotten, and to remember the many more who lost their lives in the horrors of World War II.